it. Water is one of the most important things on Earth. We all need it. We all use it. I mean, life wouldn't exist on this planet without water. So we put a lot of energy into trying to figure out how to make sure water is clean and available when we need it. What if we could use dirty water to clean itself and make electricity? Then all this stuff we don't want could be used as fuel to get what we do. Researchers at Penn State University are looking to see how little creatures that can munch on waste could someday make a big difference by generating electricity. One of the main technologies that we study is what's called a microbial fuel cell. And this is just simply a, a box that we put water into and bacteria, they're not special bacteria, but they have a special property. They can chew up organic matter and release electrons to electrodes. Organic matter can be a whole lot of different things, including, well, you get the idea. The bacteria in the fuel cell like to munch on this stuff, and as a normal part of their metabolism, they move electrons around. The tricky part is getting them to move electrons where we want them. In this case, we force the bacteria to move electrons to these carbon bristles. Eventually, the electrons build up and push each other across a circuit, powering a fan or a light bulb or whatever you want. The end product is to break down the organic matter and to produce harmless water. So we're taking stuff we don't want anyway, and with the help of bacteria, turning it into electricity to clean water. And all without any pollution or emissions. So I see you have a lot of wires strung across your lab benches here. What do you, what do, you do with those? Each pair of the wires connects up to one of these reactors wired into this multimeter, which collects data from all these reactors. So you can put different bacteria in each of these and determine which one is giving you the most um, energy production? Right, we could have put vinegar in this one, banana peels in this one, or you know whatever you'd like in each reactor. And We're looking for those super bacteria, ones that are capable of producing very high current densities. So in the lab, you're obviously studying something in a really small scale. How do you go about learning enough about it to do something that we might be able to use in our houses? Well, we can study a lot of these systems at very small scales. It allows us to very quickly determine what factors affect power generation. But we then have to understand what factors change when you make them larger. So we go from these smaller uh, reactors to slightly bigger reactors, and then reactors maybe the size of this bottle to bigger reactors like this. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of different studies on a bunch of scales to really understand how these things work. So the potential for bigger and better fuel cells in the future is definitely there. And it's starting already. Bruce and his team have set up a couple of these reactors, this time as big as refrigerators, to make electricity for treating the wastewater of a winery in California. And it's not just researchers in big laboratories. Just about anybody can make a microbial fuel cell. There are lots of tutorials and instructions online, and people are building them right now for science projects or school assignments, or just because they want to know how they work. This kind of simple, inexpensive fuel cell can be built anywhere, including places that don't usually have access to electricity. And we're hoping that this is the kind of device that would allow developing nations to have access to clean water and to treat wastewater, but at the same time producing electricity, and that could be used for lighting or it could be used to charge cell phones or just about anything. Water treatment uses a huge amount of the world's energy. If we could use microbial fuel cells to power the process, we wouldn't have to rely on other sources for the energy. The National Science Foundation funds people like Bruce, so they can think of new ways to use what we know about the world to help solve our problems. Because sometimes small things can lead to really big ideas. I've always wanted to do this.